Hello and welcome to another preview show here at a very sunny Vitality Stadium. It's a busy week, so myself and matchday commentator Chris Temple will be digesting it all in the next half an hour or so. Let's take a look at what's coming up. We'll be looking back at that 1-1 draw with Wolves last weekend. We'll be previewing tonight's FA Youth Cup game, it's Manchester City here at Vitality Stadium. And finally, we'll be turning our attention to the game against Arsenal tomorrow night up at the Emirates. Well, we are going to start back with that draw against Wolves here at Vitality Stadium on Saturday. Let's remind ourselves of the highlights. Gets away from his man first time, draw the knife, tries to pull it back, does pull it back. It runs for Klein, squares to the top of the box, opportunity for King, he goes down and he's won a penalty! Joshua King, a first touch, took it away from the defender, had his heels clipped, down he went, spot kick, 12 and a half gone game but Joshua King has the opportunity to put them in front here and he does slots it beyond Rui Patricio into the bottom right hand corner number nine for the season for Joshua King he scores for the third successive home game and the Cherries home form keeps on ticking 1-0 up against Wolves Musso can run on and cover some ground here's Johnny now off the left hand side for Wolves all of a sudden Doherty's in there he scuffs his shot it's a penalty Adam Smith came in with a challenge on Matt Doherty. It is a penalty to Wolves. Well, Doherty got the shot in, which bobbled away past the post, but the referee has pointed to the spot for the challenge by Adam Smith. We said Wolves like a late goal. Eight minutes left, they've got a chance to equalise. Can Jimenez find the finish that Wolves are looking for against Arta Boric? Rolls it into the net. Wolves are level. 1-1. The away fans celebrate, Wolves pick up the ball and run straight back to the halfway line. And there could be late twists here, 1-1. Well, it was a strange decision, wasn't it? The referees had two or three decisions. Cherry's looking for penalties, now Fraser again in the penalty, he's gone down! That's going to be a yellow card for Ryan, no, it's a penalty! It's another penalty! Bournemouth have it this time! Fraser went down, I was sure the referee was going to book Ryan Fraser for diving, instead he pointed to the spot after a protracted delay, and less than a minute after conceding, Bournemouth have got a chance to go back in front. Away in front of the North Stand. What a game this has been. King, he's missed it! Joshua King went to the same corner, low to the right, and missed it off the outside of the post. Well, a point apiece on a very entertaining afternoon here at Vitality Stadium. Extended highlights and the full 90 are available on AFCB TV for free. Chris, it was quite a game, wasn't it? And I'm also in that second half. Some second half, so many talking points. Um, so many decisions that could have gone either way. Um, some feel Bournemouth probably got the better of those decisions on the day. Wolves fans certainly, uh, if my social media is anything to go by, were very angry about uh, some of the decisions. Um, but I think it goes back to the fact that if we had VAR, we'd still be here now looking at the decisions. There were there were so many that you just couldn't tell what the right decision should be. I think even now people would struggle to say definitively what the right decision was. I thought the referee had a just a stinker, really. He had a bad day. Um, I thought... I thought Bournemouth were quite cute in that they got they got round the referee a bit more, which I think is something that they haven't done. It's it's not something you necessarily want to see really, because you don't want to see, you know, under nines over the road at Kings Park doing that um, on a Saturday morning, getting round the referee. It's all about respect for referees. But the problem is at this level when the stakes are so high, and those things do impact games. And I think and walls around the referee as well. You saw the appeals when Chris Meppham um, handballed it, which you know that that probably should have been a penalty as well. Um, and I've changed my mind on that because at the time I thought it probably was all right. So that just shows you a few replays. But the, they were they were surrounding the referee as well. So I thought he had a bad day. Um, but all in all, in terms of the game and the way it went, a point was probably about right. Um, Wolves looked very dangerous on the counter-attack. Bournemouth had a couple of good chances. Jordan Ive obviously rattling the bar. That would have been a cracking strike um, in the second half as well. Bit of a late rarity, a few set pieces, um, but nothing was like, massively close towards the end, was it? So, in the end, two decent sides, cancel each other out a little bit, um, and both hopefully will finish quite close together in the table come the end of the season. And, of course, as you say, they're, they're you know, neck and neck, and that game kind of proved it on the weekend, didn't it? They're two teams that are very similar and probably going to finish in similar positions at the end of the yeah, season. Yeah, in that little in that little chase, I mean, Wolves have got to 40 points now, I and mean, that just emphasises what a season they've had with still 11 games to go. They're already at 40, which is the, the first target for any team coming up. So, that's you know, that's guaranteed them for sure. Another season, they're probably not that they were going to be struggling, but it's nice to have it wrapped up with 11 games to go. But Bournemouth, yeah, a win on Saturday, 
actually would have closed the gap to three points to them. So now the gap uh, remains at six. Um, but still, they're, they're catchable, as are Watford, who've you know um, got to 40 points as well. West Ham in that little group of teams with their win uh, at the weekend as well. So, yeah, there's, there's still Bournemouth are in the right cluster with 34 points. And still, in terms of the, the targets for the season, I know Eddie will still say it's not enough points to be sure of being in the league next season. Bournemouth aren't going to go down, that's, that's absolutely sure. Um, I look at it now as 13 points from 11 games remaining gives Bournemouth their best ever Premier League points or not on paper with the games they've got to come yes not this week but the games they've got to come after that um, I think that's hugely achievable and, and could well beat the if, if they have you know they put the sort of form together they have been showing um, then they could well beat their previous points highly by a few and you mentioned Chris Meffham a minute ago what did you make of his full full Premier League debut thought he did well I thought it was a nice game for him to come into um, he played Wolves last season for Brentford so he knew quite a lot of their players um, I thought he was really brave on the ball um, took responsibility. He's playing on the right-hand side, which now he is right-footed, but he did play mostly on the left at Brentford um, of the centre-half pairing and, and sometimes on the left of a back three as well. So the other thing worth pointing out is he hadn't started a game for two months. Um, his last start was December the 22nd um, before he moved here and he had a little bit of an injury. So again, to come through 90 minutes um, against a, you know, a powerful attacking team, uh, I thought he did really well. There's one or two moments where I think Willow alongside me in the commentary as, as a former centre-half just had a slight uh, heart palpitation that uh, he was going to give the ball away or or fall over. There was one occasion where he got out-muscled down here behind us um, and, and Jota couldn't take advantage of it. Um, obviously, maybe got a bit lucky with the penalty. But all in all, I thought I think Eddie Howe was, and speaking to Eddie after the game, he was really pleased with what he saw from, from Chris Meppham slotting in there alongside Nathan Ake, who was colossal in there as well. Um, it's, it's hugely beneficial for someone like Chris Meppham when you've got Nathan Ake and that's sort of form so yeah and a, a nice little sort of marker for him in a way because he's going into games against Arsenal and Manchester City now it looks like Steve Cook won't be fit for the, the, the next couple of weeks at least so uh, it looks like Mepham's going to have that shirt and he will only grow from that performance and at the other end of the pitch we obviously saw another new signing Dominic Solanke he, he, he was very impressive wasn't he as well I thought he was equally as good to be honest with you yeah he had a, he had a chance with just sort of showed a bit of a lack of I guess regular football recently a lack of regular goals um, with that opportunity that he sort of hit the keeper um, but no I thought he busied himself I thought he was a good physical presence uh, I liked what I saw from his, his little burst of pace as well which you hadn't seen too much of in his in his fleeting little appearances before that a couple of times he really did show a, a good turn of foot um, he's going to be useful at set plays as well we saw him get a, a couple of headers in uh, so no I, I really like what I saw of him and hopefully you know he's going to like Chris Meppham grow with the, grow every minute he plays on the pitch and of course another talking point Jefferson Lerner he finally picked up that 10th yellow card that's going to be a, a big miss now isn't it for the next two games such a shame for him because as a player coming into the Premier League you know you want to pit yourself against the best he's going to have been suspended for both games against Man City this season which is uh, uh, he got his 5th yellow card and missed the game at C Christmas uh, against them and now he's got his 10th and he's going to miss the next two games um, I'm pretty sure I said at the time when he got suspended the first time around it's probably not a bad game to lose him for City away um, City at home I would say that's a bit of a shame because you know you've always got a chance against the big clubs I think on your own patch much more difficult away so it's a shame they won't have him for that one Ms. Andrew Sermon will, will come back in, I'm sure, and captain the side. Uh, and as for the incident itself, again, that was probably the thing that got me the most stick from Wolves fans was suggesting that uh, Jean Moutinho overreacted um, from that elbow. Yes, there was blood. Uh, whatever he did, he bit his own lip or something. But his reaction was still ridiculous. I'm sorry, even if Wolves fans are watching this, they're going to batter me some more. I'll have to mute them all. Uh, his reaction was ridiculous. It was theatrical. And when you consider the amount of players that, that the Cherries had out on Saturday, no Steve Cook, no Callum Wilson, no David Brooks, it wasn't a bad point in the end, was it at all? Yeah, no, no Junior Stanislas as well to throw in there as well. I think I think we listed seven of seven players who probably could well have been in the starting eleven not available. So it just shows, you know, adding Klein, adding Solanke, adding Mep, and these are players that have come in straight away and have, have proved themselves they're going to be up to it straight away. Some players have taken a long time to, to sort of get up to first team level, but I think it's nice for Eddie to have those, you know, there's no point bringing players in in January if they're not going to be really, I don't know, Mepham and Solanke are long-term sort of propositions really, but it's nice that they're able to play straight away. So, yeah, um, who knows who's going to be back available for these next couple of games. As we say, Steve Cook, probably not. Um, Callum Wilson and David Brooks, I think, are probably about equally as far away um, and, and not going to be available in the next two or three weeks I don't think um, so maybe Junior Stanislas is the one who possibly could come back into it for, for one of these two games as well but yeah nice that, nice that the, the, the strength in depth is showing Absolutely well ahead of our next Premier League fixture our under 18s have a big FA Youth Cup game here tonight against Manchester City at Vitality Stadium let's take a look at all their goals they've scored so far in the competition
Well, we'll be hoping for plenty more of those tonight. Chris, what a great opportunity it is for these youngsters tonight. Tough challenge, next level challenge again tonight, isn't it? But it is great that they'll be on this pitch behind us, um, fresh from the under-21s, of course, uh, giving Liverpool a decent game at the weekend. Um, and great to see such a big crowd for that one. I hope there's a good a crowd tonight um, for these under-18s who are, you know, a couple of years behind in their sort of their careers and a lot of them won't make it as professional footballers. That's the, the reality of it. But these occasions tonight, that's why they have to savour these occasions because for a lot of them who don't go on to maybe ever play on this pitch again, and that's, that's realistic. So um, the, what it does do is it's a great opportunity to, to test yourself and say, right, where are we? Because beat a Category 1 team in the last round in Aston Villa, um, fantastic win. I know Villa had 10 men for a lot of it, but still, you know, great to take a scalp. City also Category 1, but next level Category 1 um, compared to Bournemouth being Category 3. And again, for people that don't aren't familiar with the academy setups, it's, it's to do with resources and facilities and the, the sort of administrative setups and all sorts of things. So Bournemouth are still well below a lot of other Premier and, and Championship League, uh, Championship clubs in that regard. But Alan Connell, as we mentioned with Sean Cooper um, before the 21s game at the weekend, has done a great job, has made an impact. And then not just Alan Connell's a figurehead as the, the, the coach, if you like, but a lot of other guys who've been behind the scenes for a long time. The guys who coach from under 11s right up to the 18s who have been producing these players, you know, over at Canford and playing over in Kings Park and all sorts of hard work has gone in behind the scenes to get these players to be where they are now. So I just hope that the players go out and, and, and show a true account of themselves because on paper, they shouldn't win. But this is the FA Youth Cup. The cliches still are the same. Anything can happen on the day. Um, as we saw with Villa getting someone sent off early on, you know, it can, can open the game up. So, yeah, I, I'm going to be here. I'm really looking forward to, to watching some of the under-18s who I haven't seen in action before and just seeing where they are at against a, a City team who clearly can buy in the best players, even at that level. They buy them in from all over the world. And having already beaten a Cat 1 team in, in Villa, that can give them so much confidence. And again, the fact that they're at home as well. Yeah, and that's why, you know, they'll have, they'll have seen this pitch. They might have trained on this pitch a couple of times. I don't know if they've trained on it in sort of advance of this evening's game to, to get themselves sort of familiar with the surroundings of things. They'll all, of course, have come and watched first team games here and probably, you know, thought one day it'd be great to be out there. I mean, I go right back to when I was a, a, a very bad sort of non-league, lower league football. I got to play on the, the pitch of my local, like, Ryman League team. And that was absolutely amazing for me. So as a sort of 14 or 15 year old. So, and these guys will know as well, by the way, that Eddie Howe will be here tonight watching. Jason Tindall will be here tonight watching. They'll know as well. It's an opportunity to, you know, the likes of Jake Scrimshaw, Scrimshaw who's been talked about a lot. It's a chance for him now to, because he won't have trained in front of Eddie Howe too many times um, because they train separately, of course, um, the under 18s away from the first team base here. So, yeah, I think it's a great opportunity on a number of levels for them. And a few of the lads, Jake Scrimshaw being one and Brennan Camp as well, they play out on loan against men's teams. How much of an advantage will that give them? I think it's a device, it's a completely different football. It really is. When you, you know, Jake's been at Pool Town, obviously, it's been, it's a completely different um, level of football in terms of not just the, the level, but also the, the whole sort of, I guess, ethos around it. There's, there's competitive points up for grabs for a start, which often in, in under 21s and under 18 games, you don't get that competitive edge. You do when it's a cup competition, but a lot of the sometimes friendlies and things, there's a lot of good football played. Um, it's almost sort of a bit nicey nicey at times, but in an FA Youth Cup quarter final, hopefully there'll be some tackles going in. So, They'll certainly have learned a lot from, from playing in competitive non-league matches um, <clears throat> and hopefully that will stand them in good stead tonight when there is that just extra edge to the game that maybe they wouldn't be if it, it was just a, a friendly down the road against a local team. And of course we're, we're here tonight and it would be really good if there was a, a big crowd here to get behind the boys, wouldn't it? Yeah, as you say, great that so many turned up at the weekend to, to watch. It's a beautiful day. I mean, it'll get a bit chilly later on, so bring your, bring your thermals as well. But it, it would be really good to, to have the main stand packed for, for these guys to, and you know, I would be interested as well from, from a neutral point of view even if you're in the local area to come down and see what, what Man City are like at under 18 level as well as supporting your own team just as a, a general football fan fascinating to see how good City are even at that level as well but fingers crossed that the Cherries boys can uh, can cause some sort of upset because there's no doubt they would be second favourites Absolutely well if you do want to come down tonight tickets are available on tickets.afcb.co.uk and kickoff is 7 o'clock now, next up for the first team is, of course, tomorrow's trip to Arsenal. Let's take a look, little look at what Eddie Howe had to say ahead of the game. Yeah, the, um, Callum and, and David are, they are improving. They're doing well. Um, we haven't seen them join in training yet, so that would show you that they're, they're probably a bit too far off for this game. Um, Junior will be out. There's been moments in those games where we feel we've been... Uh, maybe slightly under par, but maybe slightly un unfortunate not to get something from those games. They, they are incredibly difficult. I think, you know, when you go away from home, you, you've got to get everything together within your game. You've got to maximise every chance you get at the other end. And we possibly haven't done that at, at times this season. 
we try and impose ourselves in every game. We try and um, we try and go into every match with a clear, positive game plan to win the game. We we never go into a match um, not trying to show our quality. We have to get more points, otherwise we will get dragged into um, the bottom end of the table. And if we do get more points, then we have a chance of looking upwards. Well, that was Eddie Howe speaking in his pre-match press conference. The full press conference is available for free on AFCB TV. Chris, it's another really exciting game to look forward to tomorrow night, isn't it? certainly is. Um, and of the big six games before Christmas in that little run, I would say Arsenal are the closest that Bournemouth got to. Um, obviously, a couple of Tonkings away from home. But here, um, you know, Josh King scoring that goal on the stroke of half-time to bring it back to 1-1 and then Aubameyang making it 2-1 in the second half. But some late pressure. There was a David Brooks, obviously, a disallowed goal wrongly in the first half as well, which could have made it a different afternoon. Um, Arsenal have had a, a, they've had a good little run. They've had a couple of results, obviously, recently at home in beating Bate Borisov in the Europa League and, and obviously Southampton at the weekend, which was seemed to be a very comfortable win. Saints made a couple of mistakes in that game. Um, but yeah, obviously Bournemouth beat Arsenal here last season. So uh, the Emirates is a tough place to go and win, that is for sure. Not many uh, not many teams outside the big six go there and win. Um, but Bournemouth have never done it, so it would be a great time to uh, to suddenly sort of tear that record book up. Um, but Arsenal, they do throw in a, a wobbly performance now and then. Um, you know, there was all sorts of criticism for Unai Emery at the start of the season when things weren't quite panning out and it was a sort of be careful what you wish for scenario for all those that wanted Wenger out and all of a sudden weren't getting what they wanted from Unai Emery. But they've got it together. You know, they're right in the chase for, for fourth place at the moment. Um, they're in the Europa League last 16. The only thing I will say is they've got Spurs coming up in the North London derby. They've got United coming up. They've got the two Europa League legs as well. That's the next four games, uh, not in that order necessarily. Um, so I'm just hoping that they've, you know, in terms of management of their squad and things, they might have half an eye on uh, on a couple of those games rather than tomorrow's. And of course, one thing to bear in mind is that they, of course, played on Sunday. Our game was Saturday, so they've had a, a one less day, day to rest. Yeah, I think these days, you know, sort of Sunday to Wednesday, probably not as much of an impact for, for Premier League players. But I think it's useful when you've got a couple of knocks, certainly for, for 24 hours extra to, to rest. So from that point of view, yes, but uh, it's nice for them. They've had three home games in a row um, with Barté and then with Southampton and now with Bournemouth visiting as well. Um, it's a great game for, for fans to go to. It's a fantastic ground to go and visit the Emirates. Um, you know, it's a, it can be a strange atmosphere at times as well. It can be a little bit of a library. That they used to call Highbury the library. Uh, it can be a little bit of a, you know, the, the fans are, sometimes get on their back a little bit. But, you know, look at their players. I mean, Aubameyang. John Williams was absolutely purring about Aubameyang. It's the first time he'd seen him, I think, or uh, when when they played here, or certainly it's the first time they'd noticed him. And Lacazette didn't play that game, but is uh, is back now, fit as well, and has been scoring. So, yeah, the attacking threats for the likes of Chris Meppham is going to have it all on on his uh, on his away full debut. And those two, Aubameyang and Lacazette, they're the real threats, aren't they? Of course, there's, there's players dotted all over that team that are. That are very dangerous as well. When you, when you don't need to play someone like Ozil, when Ozil can't get in for whatever the reasons are that have gone on behind the scenes, you know, that, that shows you what sort of depth and resources they've got. You know, Aaron Ramsey's off to coin it in at Juventus from next season, so it'll be the last time we get to see him uh, play against Bournemouth. But, you know, Xhaka in midfield is just, you know, he's one of those who puts the tackles in. Very physical at the back, Arsenal, as well. That's one thing I remember from the game here is that they were really pretty physical. You know, you think of Socrates and Lick Steiner and uh, other players at the back who are really sort of getting to grips with the likes. Joshua King and, and Callum Wilson obviously he won't play this game so someone like Solanke um, if he's fit to play this game and then he will you know he will certainly need to be at his physical best Joshua King as well but you know the Bournemouth's away form against the big six they're taking a couple of pastings on the road but that was in a different sort of spell when they were really sort of struggling to get any any form going starting to feel a bit sorry for themselves the only statistic they need to correct of course is the away run nine defeats in all comps in a row away from home which however you spin it doesn't look very good um, but there have been a lot of big six teams in that run. So I think this week is a case of get what you can against Arsenal and City. And then you look at the last nine games of the season, there's only Tottenham in there. Everybody else is pretty much bottom half. So um, that's, the, I guess, the way you can start to sort of get some wind in the sails towards the end of the season. But anything in these next couple of games would be a nice bonus. And in terms of our injuries, unfortunately, there's not too much change from Saturday, is there? Not a whole lot, no. Um, Dominic Sol Solanke, I think, just was feeling a little bit of fatigue at the end of Saturday. Of course, he hasn't played many 90 minutes and he did a lot of work, a lot of chasing as well and there was some talk that he just picked up a little bit of a minor knock in that game but I think he's going to be okay. Um, Steve Cook doesn't seem likely to be back who knows when at the moment no update on that um, with his groin problem he was on crutches at the ground on, on Saturday so that uh, gives us a bit of an impact an idea of the impact of, of his problem but the rest Brooks, Wilson um, and obviously the others out for the season no no one coming back Stanislas is the only one who, who possibly could be back in and around it um, who would, would provide an option of course for, uh, for Eddie going forward. 
Well, it's going to be a very exciting game tomorrow at the Emirates Stadium. If you are going up, have a very safe journey. If not, make sure you keep an eye across all of our social media channels and our website for the latest updates. Thanks for joining us.